GDP is the way that we measure how the economy is doing. Think of it like a health checkup. So overall, economic growth was flat in April, and that's because growth in some sectors was offset by decline in some others. We saw gains in mining, real estate, and the oil and gas sector, but declines in Canada's public sector. This was a reflection of the federal government workers' strike. Manufacturing also posted a decline. That was its first time in four months. Now, in addition to this weaker than expected GDP for April, we're seeing overall inflation cooling, and both are signs of slowing economic growth. Many economists say this could be enough to convince the central bank to hit pause at its next interest rate announcement in mid-July. I think there's enough how should I say, a weakness in, in the numbers now that perhaps the bank will continue to you know, or resume its wait and see, and in other words, not increase rates again. We know that the majority of Canadian households accumulated savings during the pandemic years, and now they've spent some of that and have less in the reserves. Recession fears are still on the table, but there is optimism that a downturn wouldn't last long or be too painful. The savings rate uh, dropped dramatically in that quarter, so there's a lot less to uh, you know to to kind of fire up the consumer going forward. And we think that over the second half of the year, we're finally going to see that uh, you know flattening consumer spending, you know, perhaps seeing a decline in economic activity. Now there are warning signs too. We're seeing an increasing number of households turning to debt just to get by as they deal with an improving but still elevated cost of living. Shelter costs, mortgages and rents continue to climb and a looming port worker strike in BC could have a devastating impact on imports, exports, supply chains and the economy. So things seem manageable now, but as we've seen before, things can turn on a dime. Anne Gaviola, Global News, Toronto.